Skulls made of gold, gold. brains made of chrome, chrome. with iron chromosomes. Chrome. My skulls made of gold. What's goody, warriors? I'm back. Told you I wouldn't be gone long. Let's do this thing once again. Merry Christmas. Let's get straight into this top five video games of 2014. Number five, Ultra Street Fighter. Why don't I Ultra Street Fighter is my number five? Well, was the game kind of some elements of it broken? Yeah, they were. But the game is so godlike. I love Ultra Street Fighter 4. They've rebalanced the game so more characters become viable. You know, because there's such a thing in video games where it's... I'm sorry. Messaged again on Xbox Live. My bad. So, it's like... What do I like about it? I like the way there's so many characters. You know, and there's such a diverse range of characters. Are they very stereotypical? Yes, they are. But the game's got so much depth. There's so much to learn in a Street Fighter game. You can play Street Fighter. People have been playing that game for five years. And people are still learning new things about the game all the time. That is how incredible the game is. A game that I feel doesn't bend over for you is the best game possible. Like, you've got games that they have this module where they release one game every single year because the game doesn't have much depth. It's just got style also for, for substance. And most of them don't even have that much style, you know. But a game like Street Fighter has got so much depth. Thank you, Kindra Warrior Princess. Thank you once again for subscribing and reblogging me on Tumblr. Thank you. So, it's like... Ultra Street Fighter, that's why it's my number 5. And I love the game. I love the game. I love the competitive aspect. I love the skill level. You know, there's characters for all type of people. It depends on the way you play and approach a video game and how you can find a character that suits your fighting style. Once you find a character that suits your fighting style, you'll fall in love with the game. That's why Ultra Street Fighter 4 is my number 5 top game of 2014. Number 4. Well, you won't believe this. Spider-Man Unlimited. Now, this is a phone game that you can get on any Android smartphone, yeah? This game is absolutely godlike and addictive. Now, this game as well, does it have a lot of issues? It does. People hack the games, so they hack the leaderboards, but the game is so fun. They've got all these Spider-Man, so Ben Riley Spider-Man, the Scarlet Spider-Man, normal Spider-Man, future Spider-Man... They've got every single Spider-Man you can imagine. The Big Bang Spider-Man, Super Armor Spider-Man. Spider-Man from the 1970s to 1980s, which is my era. So I know all those kind of Spider-Men that are absolutely amazing to me. Cosmic Spider-Man, Spider-Girl, Gwen Stacy Spider-Girl. All these type of characters, future Spider-Man, absolutely incredible. The 1999 Spider-Man, that was, that's one of my... Best memories of Spider-Man, because that was my era growing up, 1999, love it. So it's like, I think that Spider-Man Unlimited is incredible, it's so fun, and it's a simple kind of like running game, you know, where you go left to right, to left to middle, to jump, to slide, to do all sorts of stuff. But it's so much more, they added so much dynamic to it, the music, there's like story elements in it. It's a really addictive and fun game. You know, when you do get people on there that are cool and add you, and then you can get, like, time and bonuses and extra Spider-Man and level up your Spider-Man and get points. Although I never like the pay-to-win to to pay module, which this game is blatantly based on. If you pay more money, you will win more, which I don't like. But other than that, the game is really fun. My number three game of 2014, Sunset Overdrive. That game is absolutely in incredible i love that game i've only had the game a month as i said for the xbox one i've had the game less than a month but that game is jet set radio it's jet set radio jet set radio future jet grind radio successor and it's actually better than jet set radio and that is huge for me to say because i love jet set radio but i'm sorry the only area that sunset of drive does not beat jet set radio is music i'm sorry jet set radio destroys Sunset, um, Sunset Overdrive in terms of music. But other than that, Sunset Overdrive, the best kind of game of that genre ever. You know, like the characters, they're not superheroes, but they've got, they might as well be. They've got like superhuman powers and stuff like that. You can customize your character. Although I'll say the main customization isn't really good. The main customization are ugly, actually. You know, that's why my character, my character's a woman. 
because women have got the best clothes, they've got the best um, customization options and the best faces and stuff like that. But look at that, the game is incredible. The open world is so vast, there's so many weapons, so many things to level up. Um, the more you use weapon, the more it levels up. The weapons are crazy, like crazy. Like, if you play games like Fuse and Jack and Dexter and all the Ratchet and Clank and all those type of games, then you will love this game. The cutscenes are funny, they're cool, they're interesting, the stereotypes are a bit of a liberty, but they everything is over exaggerated in this game. So I will respect it for that. And yo, what's going on, Prodigy? EXG Prodigy sent me a message. What's going on, my Xbox Live? I'll speak to you in a bit, bro. I hope you see this message. I did see you. I mentioned you. Nice. So it's like I wanted to, um, where was I? Sunset Overdrive, sorry. Um, that's why that game is like my number three. You know, it was a really, really good game. I'm really enjoying it. The open world, you could go anywhere. You actually feel like you can go anywhere and they proper put time into this game. Like, it does, it does glitch. It's glitched out once, once, ever. But other than that, the game has been perfectly fine. I've got no flaws of the customization or arguments of the open world. The open world is incredible. The abilities you could do. The game, is the game hard? Absolutely not. Does the game bend over for you? Yes, it does. But there's so much to do and so much fun, you don't care. This is a game where you can just switch your brain off and just have fun. And just have fun, man. I love the game. Sunset Overdrive, my number three. Number two. Bayonetta 2. Now, Bayonetta 2, I love this game. I absolutely love it. I can't stop playing my Bayonetta 2. But the thing is, they have made the game... They've over-exaggerated a lot of things. And they've taken away a lot of depth from Bayonetta. Um, Bayonetta 2 was... Bayonetta 1 was an absolutely, incredibly technical game. It had a low entry level. But it had a very high... The ceiling was, there was no ceiling. It was absolutely infinite what you could do on that game. That challenge of the more you play, the more you commit yourself, the better you become, was one of the appeals of Bayonetta 1 to me. Bayonetta 2 looks good. It is so much fun. Every stage feels exhilarating. You do feel like you're on an, on an adventure. But the gameplay, it feels like something is missing. It's like when you're used to eating a five course meal every single day and then one day they serve you up a free, a four course meal and you're going to taste the difference. And that's what I feel there is with Bayonetta 2. But Bayonetta 2 is still a very good game. It's still exciting. The weapons are really cool. The things you can do in that game, the graphics are amazing. The story is very... I don't want to say anything that will be a spoiler. Um, so I really can't talk too much about it because I'll say something about Bayonetta. But you see a lot about her story. They do go more into the character of Bayonetta. There's more people for her to interact with, which you see, the, which means you get to see her story, her characteristics, everything more explored more. And I just really enjoy Bayonetta. And I also got used to the controller, the Wii controller, which is not so bad. I didn't really use the touch thing, the simple easy mode thing. I really use the controller, but it's really good. I enjoy Bayonetta 2. It's one of my top... My, it's my top... My number two. It's my number two game of 2014. I played a lot of video games, you know. But my number one video game of 2014, Eve Within. I'm done. That game is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. I love that game. Uh, that game made me feel terror. Now, if you play the game in the daytime with the lights on, on stream, talking with people or having your friends around, I'm sure it must have been an experience, a pleasurable experience, where you weren't really shocked or surprised or scared or terrified or there were no tense moments for you. And I'm happy. I'm happy for you if you encountered that. But if you played the game properly at night time, round of Halloween when I played it, with headphones, proper sound headphones. Because one of the stars of Eve Within is the sound. The sound. Playing it at night time. And just immersing yourself. Playing the game alone. That game is bloody terrifying. 
it's tense. I'll admit to you, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't look forward to playing it because I knew I would have out of body experiences and I'd be terrified. That game was shocking. It was tense. It was exhilarating. I was shocked. I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. I absolutely loved the game for the way it made me feel. It genuinely made me feel fear. And not fear of death. Fear of I don't know what is going to happen around the next second, let alone corner. The next second, I don't know what's going to happen. Even when you're in your safe point, your safe world, where you know you're supposed to be safe, you're not safe. You're not safe nowhere. Nowhere. You don't know what is going to happen. Legitimate fear. That game induced upon your soul. Even within. What a game. The story wasn't absolutely incredible, right? But it did have depth to it. If you read the books, the notes, you understood what was happening, you know, with all the characters, with Sebastian, with um, Ruvik, with, um, oh, what was the, um, Kidman, you know, with all the characters that were there in the game, if you understood it, you know, and Leslie, all those kind of characters, the game did actually have a solid story. But we will see more in the DLC. So the game's not actually finished yet. And I love that game. It's my number one game of 2014. The weapons were good. The weapons didn't feel overpowered. You had like a lot of weapon variety. And every weapon you had felt like they had a use. It wasn't like you had 12 weapons and out of 12, only really four of them would be different. No. This actually felt like you had, you had like I think about maybe six or seven weapons and each weapon was unique situational and their own unique uses against unique enemies the, you will never the character I would say the character Sebastian Castellanos he was underpowered right he was underpowered but it fits the game very well and I enjoyed it for that reason I felt like it wasn't there was like a lot of situations where you would die through not knowing the unknown. That was what was cool about the game. Because like, you know, there's a lot of games where it's like, it's hard, but you will die because you didn't know there was a trap there. The game shows you what you can and can't do. And every single area you approach, there's multiple ways of attacking and tackling every single stage, every single enemy, every single situation. Even within, what a game. What a game. What a game. I love this game. This game was delightful. You know, I'm still playing that game. I'm still playing that game right now. You know, I played that game like at least six, 16th. This is my 16th. No, 7th. 17th. 17th. Like I'm campaigning for it right now on the hardest difficulty. It's a seventh, my 17th run through. You know, and I'm loving the game. I think the game's absolutely amazing. It's my number one game of 2014, you know. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Give my rundown of my top five uh, video games. So number five, Ultra Street Fighter. Number four was Spider-Man Unlimited. Number three was Sunset Overdrive. Number two was Bayonetta 2. And number one, The Eve Within. So Warriors, thank you very much for watching. And look forward to my top five anime of 2014. Take care, guys.